Good morning and thank you again for joining us for this morning's session. So my name is Lewis McKinnon, I'm the Head of Partner Development for the UK and Europe at Studiosity and I'll be joined later on this morning by Dr Alison Trulove uh, from the University of Exeter to give a case study on the collaboration between our two organisations. So just to set the scene, what is Studiosity? We're an online on-demand study support service that's provided by real people. We're available 365 24-7 and we have high quality specialists from diverse academic backgrounds providing this. We work at scale to provide tailored support for all students. And the key element here, which is relevant for this morning's session, is we collaborate with institutions to improve achievement, experience and retention. We have 15 partners currently in the UK and Ireland. Uh, we're an Australian company um, from our origins. We work with 75% of Australian institutions and we support about 1.6 million students per annum. So a few of the focus areas this morning, we're going to be looking at identifying the expectations from students and looking at this collaborative approach with institutions and how that gives a holistic support ecosystem between the two and differentiating the support to target all students and help support them most effectively and obviously measuring the impact and outcomes there. And of course, we'll be finishing with the highlight of this morning, which is the case study from the University of Exeter and leaving some time at the end for some Q&A. So I'd like to just channel my inner David Brent a little bit here. We've got a quote from uh, PBC for Education from a, a UK HEI that I spoke to earlier this year. And it says, at our institution, we have the ability to predict a student's destiny. However, we currently don't have the ability to change it. And I thought that was very apt uh, for the collaboration between the University of Exeter and Studiosity, because we now do have the tools and that collaborative nature to be able to help support students based on the expectations that they have, which we're now going to have a look at in a little bit more detail. So it's gaining this clarity on the current, but also future student expectations as well. So in terms of student experience, obviously we have to talk about the pandemic. 81% reported that the coronavirus pandemic had a negative effect on the university experience. But I've broken this down into three subcategories here. So mainly it was about the less face-to-face -face concept with academics, but it was also to do with being on campus less, of course, but there is that key element there as well, which is more online learning. And this is all from our independent well-being research that we um, commissioned recently and was published in February 2021. And also from this same data set, we look at student retention. So about 71% have considered withdrawing as a result of struggling with studying alone. And that's about a 15% increase over the last two years. So obviously the pandemic highlighting some of these factors, but they were always ever present as well. And then talking about student well-being as well, about 48% said uh, that the top study stress prevention method was 24-7 online support when students are not in class or on campus. And this is you know, quite significantly higher than those other subcategories as well. And then also a final expectation here is 63% said they would use an on-demand 24-7 online support service from a real person if it was available. And that is significantly higher than those that actually already have access to a service such as Studiosity. So it shows there is the demand there and that we need to do more to nurture that. So that feeds into this collaborative approach. So it's aligning these student expectations with the institution objectives as well. And obviously there's always this balancing act between the two. So we have student expectations and institution objectives. These student expectations focusing on things like 24 7 support and getting that personalized support with the institution objectives looking at elements such as scaling their online delivery being able to improve retention and academic achievement and that is this increase in online and blended provision requiring an adaptation of existing support and you have this compound challenge of increasing the self-study with more engagement required as well so that's where studiosity obviously helps support in between that and then we create what we call this holistic ecosystem. So we have currently the institution engagement level, where you have the institution tutors, you have peer support, phone and email, and then further targeting specialist support. And so you have lecturers and content specialists and faculty administrators, and of course the librarians and the library teams. And then at the very fine end, you have at-risk students. So those at-risk students requiring student services teams and maybe additional support, which is critical and very tailored. But then above this, 
we have early intervention, and this is where studiosity integrates. So it's quite a significant proportion that directly plugs into an existing institution support services. So it's at scale and it's for all students, but it does complement this academic delivery. It's personalized feedback, and of course, we've already mentioned it's 24 seven and 365. It's online and device responsive, and it's on demand and real time. And those key elements there help address a great number of those student expectations, not just after the pandemic, but those previously as well, with an increase in studying alone and requiring more support from their institutions. So it does complement this existing support. So we see a breakdown here of the percentage of students that ask someone for help after class or off campus, and that's 74% compared to 26% yes and no. And if you break this down even further, you can see that the majority of that is for somebody at the university. So it, Studiosity is not there to replace any of these existing support services or replace these existing personnel. It's there to complement this existing support structure. So 59% being someone at university, but of course there is a critical element there as well if they're not available, someone outside of the university. So just to give clarity on the studiosity services, so how do we provide this differentiated support? So we have writing feedback, which is constructive academic writing feedback in less than 24 hours. We have Connect Live, which is our on-demand personalized one-to-one -one support service that happens in real, in real time. And that's supported by a global network of 1,200 specialists. Now we complement that with our latest platform, which is called Student Connect, and that's institution-led peer-assisted learning. And that works in the same format as Connect Live, and that happens in real time. But that is scheduled one-to-one -one institution mentor sessions to give that subject-specific knowledge. And these all integrate in three different ways to give this differentiated support. So connect live and writing feedback, combining with our uh, Studiosity mentors, but they do have crossover there with the, the benefits from Student Connect as well. And it's predominantly there to provide academic support services for all students and to make sure they're always available. And it's completely integrated within an institution's VLE. And we have things like single sign-on using the LTI protocol and data integration with the portal to make sure there is a seamless experience for both students and institutions alike. And that leads us into this collaborative relationship. So based on an institution's objectives, the services can be integrated to target academic support where needed. So a great deal of our institutions, such as the University of Exeter, have this institution-wide but many of them started their relationship with Studiosity to target a particular academic level or a specific cohort of students that were identified as needing extra support. So the data and the insights for the institutions help compare and integrate usage data to identify these trends and help to look at future development areas as well. So the data insights for institutions, we have an overlay here of three years for EMEA interactions by week. Institutions can get this via a portal in a very user-friendly format, or they can access the raw data and plug this into their existing systems that derive trends against their own existing metrics as well. And then if you delve into this data in more detail, you can gauge the peaks, the troughs, and get deeper understanding to start to learn more about your student expectations and their behavior. And then you can then use this data to actually identify these peaks and troughs where you can identify these learner trends by combining your internal experience with the Studiosity data. And then you can start to highlight these peaks here, for example, increase in referencing queries. So you can get that real specific insight into the development areas for particular departments or programs or modules. And then also when there is a lull in the service demand, this also tells us a lot about the student profile and also to help triage these internal resources for greater impact to help maximize the time usage for staff internally as well. The key message here is that with the data integration and the reporting, it can help demonstrate the efficacy of this collaborative approach to the individualized study support at scale. And then just to finish my particular point this morning, looking at impact and outcomes, the quantitative and the qualitative feedback demonstrating the impact of study support at scale, we have this measurable impact here. So we have things for students, 83% had a greater awareness of academic skills required to avoid plagiarism. So it's highlighting very specific areas there. 50% reported they were less anxious as a result of studiosity at their institution. So we're looking at a well-being angle as well and a well-being benefit. 
and about 15,000 feedback interactions demonstrate a 92% satisfaction rating, which of course is a very useful metric to measure. And then equally combined with that, we get institution measurable impact. So there was an 8% improvement in retention across six surveyed HEIs that we work with. And approximately 66% of University of Roehampton's usage is out of hours. And 72% of international students subsequently attended in-house workshops. So it's reinforcing that messaging to students to loop back in to existing support services, further cementing that collaborative approach. Now, we do benchmark against things like the National Student Survey, the NSS. And in a recent piece of research that we did by Professor Liz Thomas, the impact of studiosity on the student experience there were a subset of NSS questions benchmarked against full-time and part-time students and studiosity full-time and studiosity part-time students. And when we actually delve into that data in more detail, we can see there was a demonstrable increase for studiosity full-time students in the majority of those categories having a better experience as a combination of using their existing institution support services, but also studiosity services as well. And the same was witnessed with those part-time students as well. So that just gives a general overview of the key areas that I would like to focus on. And now I'd like to hand over to um, the University of Exeter to talk about the case study example here and the collaborative relationship with the university, uh, with Studiosity as well. Great, thank you very much, Lewis. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, so as Lewis said, I'm um, here to represent the University of Exeter. Um, we started on our journey um, with Studiosity back in 2018 um, with a pilot just for business school students. Um, so we're a large business school, five departments, around five and a half thousand students now. Um, and in 2019-20, because of the success of that pilot, we extended to three colleges across the university. Um, and then finally, in 2020-21, this academic year, um, nicely coinciding um, with all of the challenges that are brought upon us because of the um, global pandemic. Um, we've now extended to all students across the whole university. So that's around 25,000 students um, across three campuses. And of course, many of our students are learning remotely as well um, at the moment. So as I say, we, we've, we've had this journey really for two and a half years, coming up for three years now. Um, we, we are a research intensive, we're a Russell Group University. Many of our staff are um, committed researchers. Um, a lot of their time is spent on things other than teaching. Um, but at the same time, we are absolutely committed to providing our students, of course, with the highest quality education experience that we can. Um, many of our students come in with very um, good grades at A-level or equivalent qualifications. Um, so the assumption is sometimes made that our students are very capable, that they wouldn't need additional support. But of course, that's not true. Um, I'm sure all of you um, watching today um, from other universities will understand that um, students are incredibly diverse and we can't make assumptions on um, based on their background, their characteristics, on the kinds of support that they would value and that's certainly come to the fore in our relationship um, with Studiosity. Can you slip to the next slide please, Lewis? So um, as Lewis has very eloquently explained um, through his part of this presentation, um, our use of studiosity is very much there to complement other services within the university. Um, and one of the things that we've really valued over the um, almost three years that we've been working with them is that there very much is a collaborative relationship there. Um, the, the signposting of students towards support is, is very much two directional. So when students are using studiosity, um, they are very much encouraged as part of that interaction um, to access other, uh, other services that are available at the university whether that's our study skills teams, um, or it might be our language support team, um, or it might be more support within a department. Um, and of course, we are very much um, encouraging them all the time to use Studiosity as well. So Studiosity is very much embedded within our existing Success for All approach um, across the University of Exeter. Um, for many, many years now, we've had an approach of Success for All that we are providing individual, tailored, um, responsive support for every single one of our students. Um, as I said earlier, we don't make assumptions based on their prior qualifications or their particular characteristics. Um, we, we teach, treat each individual as an, each student as an individual and provide them with the support they need right the way through their journey with us. Um, we have regular steering group meetings with representatives from Studiosity. Um, so our partnership manager, who works very closely with Lewis and the wider Studiosity team, 
um, before COVID came along, um, would come to, to the campus and meet with us um, as a group. Now, obviously, we're doing that via Zoom, but it's, it's equally as effective. Um, that group provides us with really great opportunities to evaluate how the service is going, um, to look at further development. Um, so Studiosity have been incredibly open to our suggestions of how we might improve um, the relationship we have with them and the service that they offer. Um, so that, that has been a real success and we've seen um, some significant moves forward in terms of the service that um, is very individualised for us as a, as a partner. Can we move on to the next slide, please, Lewis? So what do the students get, get in, in terms of the service um, from Studiosity? So we use the writing feedback service, which is the most popular service that our students use with Studiosity, um, and the writing feedback service. Um, they obviously get that 24-7 access to personalised support from a, a real live human being. Um, it's not a chat bot, uh, it's not an automated service, it's a genuine uh, you know, individual who is, is interacting with that student, either via a, a live session with Connect Live or through the return of their work with detailed feedback. Um, it is incredibly flexible for the students. Um, so obviously at the moment we have many students um, learning remotely who are in other countries, working in different time zones. So Studiosity has really filled um, a gap for us. We can't have our own staff available um, right the way through um, the night, but obviously other students um, who, are, who are learning remotely are, are able to access that one-to-one -one support when they need it. And it also fits around other requirements. So um, increasingly we're finding many of our students are are working part-time through their studies. Um, so they're able to access the, the sort of after hours, even if it's sort of early evening um, when they're needing that support. And we see through the Studiosities portal, the partner portal, um, that we all have access to exactly when our students are using the service. Um, and indeed, there are very many of them that are using it outside of the times when we as academics would be able to provide them with that support. Um, so it's providing additional opportunities, essentially, ad additional opportunities for support that we, we don't have the capacity to provide, but also wouldn't normally be part of what we do as, um, as part of our education offer. Um, so we have increasing numbers, of course, um, of international students whose first language is not English. It very much supports the development of their language. Um, we obviously do not proofread um, as, as tutors when um, students are giving us their work. Um, where, and it's not a proofreading service, I should emphasise that Studiosity does not proofread, it doesn't correct students' work, it provides them with developmental opportunities to improve. And, and again, that's really close to our ethos at Exeter, that students are continually looking to improve the, the, um, their approaches to their study, um, and Studiosity gives them the support to be able to do that. The additional support that we, we see for the university as a whole is, is for faculty as well, because what it means by having a student submit their work via Studiosity and get that developmental support in terms of improving the quality of their writing, it means that when we actually get to read their work, um, the fluency is, is much improved, um, it's much easier to read that work, um, and it's much easier to focus on the, the content level. Um, to see whether they've actually met the intended learning objectives uh, of that particular assessment, rather than feeding back on things like referencing uh, and style and structure. Next slide, please, Lewis. So um, in terms of strategies, um, and just really briefly, I just wanted to talk through some of the things that we do at Exeter to make sure that um, the studiosity has been very well embedded as we rolled out across different colleges. So it's very much a blended approach. Um, even before COVID came along, um, all of the support that we offer to our students, whether that's by academic departments or our study skills teams or our language support teams, it was already, it was already blended. So students could already access support face-to-face -face on campus, um, but also remotely as well. And, and so Studiosity has fitted really nicely into that, um, giving students as many opportunities as possible to access support in ways that will suit their particular um, needs. Um, working really closely with our central skills support teams and language support teams has been absolutely fundamental to the success of the rollout of Studiosity at Exeter as well. Uh, and again, that two-way communication, they join us in our um, steering group meetings, and that really helps with that um, and continual improvement of the service. We make sure that embedding um, the signposting um, to Studiosity throughout everything that we offer at Studiosity uh, at Exeter, um, so that Studiosity is, is at the fore in every interaction that they have. Um, so whether that's through our VLE or through emails and newsletters that go out, 
perhaps most importantly, though, via the actual teaching that they're getting with their, with their tutors, where their actual academic tutors, their personal tutors are putting that personal recommendation forward. Um, we find that that's the main way that students are, are empowered to access this support. Um, and it's really important as well that we are normalising the accessing of support. Um, many of our students, as I referred to earlier, are very high tariff students. They come in with very high grades. Um, before they come to university, they're used to being successful. And it can be quite a struggle to convince them that it's okay to access support. So part of our overall approach, not only with Studiosity, but also in all the other support that we encourage our students to access, is that there is no stigma attached to that and, and that we expect them to be continually developing their approaches to study. Um, and then finally, the thing that we really are starting to do a lot more now that we're, we've rolled out Studiosity across the whole university, is diagnosing where the service will most benefit students. So we're looking at the data via the, the partner portal. We're also doing our own internal analysis, um, making sure that those students who will benefit the most from the service, for whatever reason that might be, are the ones that we are mostly targeting in terms of that support, even though we make it available to all of our students. Um, okay, so that I think that's it for me in terms of uh, a lightning speed um, review of what we, we do at Exeter. I'm really happy to take questions. I'm sure Lewis is as well. Thank you so much, Lewis and Alison. We do have quite a number of questions here, so we'll try and get through as many as we can. Um, first of all, um, an anonymous poster would like to know how confident you are that you are actually reaching those students who need support the most, rather than those who perhaps worry well and actively seek out such services. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if Lewis would like to talk a little bit about the analytics that you do in a moment, but certainly at Exeter, um, we work very closely with our widening participation team. And even during the pilot, we were looking quite closely at um, how students were using the service um, and trying to pick that up. We were quite pleasantly surprised, actually, most of our widening participation students um, can be reluctant to access support for all sorts of complex reasons. And we were finding that they were accessing studiosity at the same level um, uh, as and the same frequency as our as our other students. So that for us was a really good indicator that we were reaching the right people. Um, but we are doing further analysis on that. And again, I don't know if um, Lewis would like to add. Sure. Yeah. All I would add is that the the data analytics tools that we have. Based on the collaborative nature of the relationship with the institution, you can drill down into as much detail as you wish. So you can actually highlight particular programs, particular modules, make it discipline specific, so that you can start to get greater insight into the, the kinds of student comments that are coming in and the nature of the feedback that is being produced. So all the transcripts are available, all the pieces of feedback are available for review as well. And you can start to derive these patterns from students that actually genuinely do require specific support in a particular area or those that are still seeking support and that's absolutely fine but they may just be wanting to sense check their work to make sure they're on the right track and you get complete clarity from that through the partner portal and the nature of the analytics uh, collaboratively between the institution and studiosity fantastic okay uh, another question here from charlie bailey um, she would like to know whether students are able to access the data and insights about themselves so that they can perhaps use this to identify areas of self-development yeah, they absolutely can. So everything is available to all key stakeholders involved in the student support. So the students have access to all their previous submissions, all the transcripts from their live engagement. They get access to all that historical data through their own um, BLE access area. Um, but they also get the insights into colour coded categories for the particular categories of support that they've received. And they can actually seek this help directly through Studiosity or the, the university that they work with as well. So they have many different avenues to always have access to the information that they need. And they can ultimately sense check this information as well with the key stakeholders involved, whether it's staff at Studiosity or staff at the University of Exeter equally. Fantastic. We have a question here from an anonymous poster who is asking whether you think that students who receive Studiosity support actually have an unfair advantage over those who don't have access to it at other universities. Well, it's a good question, isn't it? Um, we like to uh, offer our students, um, as I said earlier, as many different routes to support as possible. And um, Studiosity sits really nicely within that wider suite of support. I think it's an individual um, decision for each in, each university to see how well that would fit within their own suite of support. 
Um, I know studiosity is now being used in the UK by a very wide range of different universities. Um, and it seems to be working really well. So I guess all I can say is enc encourage every university to consider whether it would work for them, um, accepting that maybe they have other, other ways um, of offering support to their students that might be superior in some way um, than the service that's offered here. Of course, of course. Um, another question here, um, an anonymous poster would like to know a little bit more about the actual uptake of the service amongst students, saying it can be really difficult to make students aware of the services that we do provide and actually get them to use them. Yeah, so one of the things that we do is work very closely with our students to promote services um, and think other things that are going on within the university more broadly. So one of the things that's worked really well for us this year is that we've got some of our um, students that we employ as digital learning assistants to create a short video that's used to publicize the Studiosity service. And that's embedded within all sorts of places um, within our virtual learning environment. Um, I think the student voice in promoting um, these sorts of services is very powerful. Um, if a student can say, I've used it, it's worked for me, why don't you try it for yourself? Uh, often that works, that works really well. I don't know if you want to add anything from your experience at other universities, Lewis. Sure. So usage is one of the key metrics that we keep a focus on. And usage generally proportionally reduces with the larger cohort that has access to the support. So, for example, if an institution wants to target the support to a cohort of maybe three or 5,000 students, you'll see a much higher proportion of usage because obviously there's been more work done behind the scenes to identify that those particular students may need greater levels of support. And obviously when it's widened out further, you see that ratio, that percentage of support, that usage dropping because it's being spread across a larger amount of students. So it's that targeted support, which is the key metric here. If you want to target the support, you'll see a much higher usage. If you want to offer the support service to a wide range of students, you will see that usage statistic being representative across different academic levels or in, in, indeed different uh, programs, different subject disciplines as well. And you get all of that data provided to you um, behind the scenes as well. Thank you, Lewis. OK, uh, I think we have time for one more very quick question. Um, an anonymous, anonymous poster would like to know how you provide feedback through developmental approaches without proofreading their work. Sure. So we have a academic integrity policy, which is a key document that all specialists that work with Studiosity have to adhere to. So one of the key elements we do is work with an institution to mirror or represent any specific areas that they want to focus on. So that might be a particular referencing style. It might be particular pedagogical elements that they want to reinforce from a specific department as well. So that's the first primary call we have there. Then we have our standard protocol that we use in terms of giving that guidance, that help not answers approach, and actually helping students follow some of the key initiatives to actually articulating subject matter knowledge more effectively, structuring their work more effectively, all these key elements to help derive a better answer, a better response in conjunction with that specific subject matter knowledge. So it's a combination of those two where we don't go into the specific subject matter knowledge, we enable students to articulate it more effectively.